you may have heard day before yesterday we had the race relations conciliator Meng Foon on speaking. He said also on behalf of the Human Rights Commission of Paul Hunt to two reports they have released. Um, reports which suggested a massive constitutional rejig was needed in New Zealand to make uh, us a truly, well, bicameral um, two-government system based on the Treaty of Waitangi and that we needed a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to address the racism woven into, and I use this term because it's a quote, woven into the fabric of our society. Now, interesting to note that many, many people have rejected that report, including the new Prime Minister, has said uh, that he's concerned about the reports and there will not be a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Um, and I was thinking of someone who could give us a perspective on this. And I uh, thought there was, was no one better, and thankfully he's, he's joining us this morning, than a former race relations conciliator and someone who comes from, originally, South Africa, way back. His name is Greg Fortain and he joins us on the line now. Greg, how lovely to talk to you again. Welcome to the platform. Uh, good morning, Sean. It must be a good couple of years since oh, we've last spoken. Well, it, it is. It certainly is. What are you doing with yourself now, by the way? Oh, um, I chair a few boards, so quotable value. I chair the only Kiwi saver for Muslims in New Zealand. Um, I'm on the Salvation Army board for New Zealand and Fiji, Tonga and Samoa. And yeah. I also have a mother with dementia and a, a son who's a recovering drug addict who's in um, an institution and I have grandchildren, so yeah. I'm still as active as ever. Yeah. Now, Greg, we may have a few people in of more tender years than you and I um, who <laughs> haven't heard you before. Uh, what years were you race relations conciliator in New Zealand? Yep, so 2001, 2002, and I, I had a very limited scope, which was purely to say, how do we combine the Human Rights Commission with a separate race relations office? Yeah. And so that's the job we did um, 31st of December, yeah. 2001. Yeah. And so I went from becoming a race relations conciliator to Race Relations Commissioner when we joined up with the Human yeah, Rights Commission yeah, right. 1st of January 2001. And Greg, prior to, to that... 2002. Yeah, prior to that, your whakapapa goes back to South Africa and, and, and give our audience an idea of your experience there. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm proudly a son of Porirua with yep. a very rich African her with a very rich African heritage. Yeah. But again, with my African heritage, I have Dutch and German ancestors. I have indigenous Khoisan and African ancestors. And I also have a great grandfather who came from India. You know. So I have a mix of the Whakapapa is a very rich tapestry. Mm. But I was raised and born and brought up in South Africa. So I was born into apartheid, was born into an, an evil system that judged me purely on the basis of the color of my skin. And so I will never again be silent when I see any issue with regard to discrimination based on superficial issues or things that people have no control over. Mm. But yeah, thankfully, South Africa moved on. Mm. And I think one of the important things is is the language that we use, you know. I feel a little bit that I've just walked into the lion's den. I'm, I'm just following... Uh, I'm a pussycat. I'm a pussycat, Greg. Act, no, no, I'm <laughs> talking about two act party leaders. So you've got you've yeah. had David on, yeah. and then you've had Stephen Frank on. Yeah. And yep, I, I, I agree with David. Uh, and if you go look at some of my statements in 2001, yeah. What does the treaty mean in a 21st century democracy? So mm. that was my statement in mm. beginning of 2001. And so David is saying the same, but where David and I disagree is <laughs> we often arrogantly assume that we have a monopoly on the solutions. None mm. of us have a monopoly on the solutions. Mm. And so there needs to be a discussion 
from both sides of the spectrum or even three or four sides of the spectrum. And David should be mindful that he leads a party where the former leader in Richard Preble said Somalia refugees are just desert dwellers from Africa who should go back where they come from. So Mm. I don't have a good uh, view of the views of the ACT Party leadership Mm. if that is the views they hold, you know. Yeah, I don't think David would ever say that and I think ACT has changed uh, over the years and I guess uh, that's a wider thing. Don't judge me by the actions of my ancestors or predecessors. Greg, it was really interesting and I'm so glad you brought up the fact that you were born into apartheid and you know what that system is and that we have to be careful in the language we use because it seems to me yep, that, the re- that the reports that have come out of the Human Rights Commission use language, uh, and the language they've used is that racism is woven into the fabric of our society. Yeah. Uh, and then they call yep. for a Truth and Reconciliation Commission, yep. and I personally feel, and, I, and I'll admit this because I am a human being, I feel insulted that the country I live in and its history and the history of my ancestors, which I'm not responsible for, but I live with, is being compared to the system that you were brought into. That New Zealand and its race relations, its history can be compared to that of the most racist regime in the world. And suggesting that we need a race, uh, a Truth and Reconciliation Commission because of the power of that word or that title, I find personally insulting. And and can you understand that? And do you think it was a misstep by the Commission to use that term? Yeah, I I can totally understand that. That, you know, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission had a specific purpose, that we needed to stop the cycle of violence. But there were thousands of parents who never knew what happened to their children. I mean, former President Mbeki's son, is still missing, yeah? And it's only during the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that we learned about the horrendous issues with people being thrown to the crocodiles and bodies being burnt on the barbecues, etc. But the purpose was, let's have the truth and there will be amnesty for the truth mm. in order for us to heal the wounds. Eh? So, uh, going back to language is important and i can understand why people like you are outraged that the language we use here and this report was written for the parliamentarians because the overall justice we need constitutional transformation if i read the report correctly. yeah yeah that's right and then the report says we need a vehicle to work out what's gone wrong, etc. But I don't think the language should be Truth and Reconciliation Commission because that just gets people's backs up. And, and nobody moves from one position to another if you try and blame them or shame them. You have to inspire them to a different position. And so I would have called it the the 2040 Justice Commission. You know? So what does an Aotearoa New Zealand look in 2040? based on the treaty, Mm. based on the rights of indigenous people, which John Key took us to the United Nations and signed up for, but based on also the views of everybody who live here now. And so we have to collectively come up with what does it mean and how do we all live together? Yeah. Well, the other thing is the suggestion that there is racism woven into the fabric of New Zealand society and that in any way you can compare the apartheid regime with New Zealand in the year 2023. So I'm going to ask you straight up, Greg, are are we, is there racism woven into the fabric of New Zealand? Is, are we, as Taika Waititi says, racist as F or not? Yeah, so so firstly, again, I think the comparisons with South Africa is not a helpful one because that was a legislative racism. But you, if you go back to the history of Australia and New Zealand, Australia had officially a whites-only policy. If you looked at who did New Zealand allow into the country a uh, hundred years ago, yeah. fifty years ago, yeah. it was an informal whites-only policy. And if you look at the uh, talking to people of colour in this country, have you experienced racism? You just have to ask Judith Collins, who says that my son. We, we've got friends who had to change their names, who were Chinese, when we applied for 
jobs because people don't want to give us jobs. So if you go talk to African communities here, they will tell you that it is. But I, I don't think it's helpful to say it's similar to what happened in South Africa, but it's also naive to say that there isn't racism here. But I'd rate New Zealand race relations as a 6 or 7 out of 10 versus um, where South Africa, when I grew up, was a 2 one or two out of ten. Hmm? Yeah. Well, given then that the Human Rights Commission has published a report that does, I think, essentially um, not paint as rosy picture you have, it doesn't suggest that we need to have a discussion about constitutional reform. It takes the position that we need to have it, and it has used the word Truth and Reconciliation yep. Commission. Hasn't it done itself, yep. actually, and it's the institution that it is, an, or, an enormous amount of damage... And hasn't it actually put back race relations and, and harmony in this country by being provocative and not thinking before it published this, in my opinion, rubbish? Uh, uh, again, I, I sort of see the goal that they wanted to achieve was saying, how do we contribute to getting this conversation started? But the, the language, again, if, if I want to convince somebody like you to participate, I wouldn't use the equivalent of a South African mm. Truth and Reconciliation Commission. I would use the same language that will get you inspired, which is, so how, how do we have a justice commission that helps us towards 2040 so that we can be an inclusive place? And we do understand what the treaty means for the whole of New Zealand. Yeah. So, you know, the language is, is... But then the same. I mean, Christopher Luxon said the treaty was an experiment. And then we all focus on just that, but we actually had oh, quite just a lot the of trolls, to say. The Labour trolls concentrated on that. Yeah, they yeah, all lost but, their but mind, didn't the they? that's the thing. Uh, we often lose the main issue because we then get sidetracked by some of the wording, you know, which is why I'm saying words mm. are important. And we have to say, how do I inspire my audience? And I don't achieve that by doing stuff which just gets people's backs up. You know? mm. but, but we should confront the issues. Mm. Greg, it is great to talk to you after so long. And we did many, I think, uh, interviews on Morning Report and the like. Yeah, yeah we uh, did, Sean. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, and I'm really interested in your perspective and your context on this. I think you've identified, yep, yep. Uh, in what you said, that we live in, an, in, in, because of social media, I don't know that people have changed much, but the, the ability for um, debates and discussions on all sorts of things to get polarised yep. and, to be honest, puerile very, very quickly yep. has been enhanced by the wonders a of the internet. I'm wondering if you, if you look back 20 years, yep. are we a less racist, less divided society than we were then? Or are we worse? Are we more at odds with each other? Are we less tolerant and accepting of the differences of what is a amazing multicultural country that we live in? Oh, totally. Thank, thank God for Aotearoa New Zealand. You know, the people here, I've already said to you, I write race relations six or seven out of ten verses, yeah. and I would see us way ahead of where Australia is, for okay. instance. And ahead of where we were 20 community. years ago, Greg? Most probably only halfway there, Sean. But still but, better but than strides, 20 years ago. Better than yeah, 20 years well, ago. T totally. The strides that we have made is there, there are far more people who are less arrogant in believing we know what's right for everyone. You know? we, we know the solutions and we have a monopoly on the solutions. We have become a more inclusive society. New Zealand's response to what happened on March the 15th, 2019 is of a global standard as a whole of society. We have said New Zealand is one country and one society and we will all stand together. But you look at other countries around the world, the divisions are, are far greater. I mean, yeah. Uh, they are so, I don't even want to, remit, to name the U.S., but they are so divided right now, whereas we are the standard. But in my view, we should strive to be the 9 out of 10. We should 
demonstrate to the rest of the world how do we live in harmony, all of us, but how do we respect an agreement that was signed 183 years ago? And what happened if we told Maori chiefs 100,000 of them versus only 2,000 settlers. Here's what will happen to <laughs> your country over the next 200 years. Would yeah. they have signed that agreement? So yeah, but we, we also got to recognise that, that no one alive today signed that treaty. I haven't yeah, colonised anyone. Rick. And to be yeah. honest, I'm not the Crown either. Yeah, oh, I, t I total agree, totally agree with you, Sean. Yeah. But we, we have people who fuck a papa, and we have people who are saying, that's my history, and we just need to work out how do we have this discussion. And I think that's what the Human Rights Commission was trying to say, but the way they said it have got more backs up. I mean, even the PM have said, no, 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 yeah, we're yeah, not going right. to go down that track. Yeah. But they've lost, they've lost the thought of we must have this constructive discussion, which is what David Seymour saying as well. We must have this discussion, you know? So yeah. most people are happy to have the discussion and let's go there with open hearts and open ears, knowing that we don't have a monopoly on the solutions. And maybe, just maybe somebody else might have a better idea. You know? Yeah, Greg, can I just say, it is kind of heartening to talk to you again these days I interview so many people who tell me what's wrong or what's got them outraged and it seemed to me you still have a good heart on you. And it is so encouraging, oh, thanks, to, it is so encouraging to talk to someone who perhaps has rose-tinted glasses on rather than looking through a glass uh, darkly. I thank you very much indeed to your uh, contribution to our discussion this morning, my friend. Pleasure. Pleasure. All the best. God bless. That is uh, Greg Fortain, former race relations conciliator. He grew up in apartheid South Africa, came out here, was involved in the merging of the race relations office with the Human Rights Commission. And look, a straight shooter, Greg. And I think he said what, what Ming Foon and Paul Hunt have done with those reports and the way that they have publicised them, they lost the room and they got it wrong. Um, and he did say, look, from 20 years ago, this country's made progress. How nice to get an optimistic message.